Hey guys, happy belated Saturday. Uh, I'm gonna try to catch up for all of the themes that I missed. Um, Harrison, you were only gone two weeks. Uh, that's nothing. Um, I didn't even grow a beard in all of the time that I was away. So my song for the week um, is Overture, because I saw a lot of musicals. This weekend we saw Man of La Mancha, um, which was an amazing production. The acting was unbelievably fantastic. Um, and the set had a working uh, dungeon staircase drawbridge that like was pulled up and you didn't even notice it was there until the Inquis Inquisitor guys came in and you heard this like clinking of metal as the chains are being lowered and the staircase came down and it was pretty impressive. That was the second show that we saw that day. We saw Children of Eden which is a Stephen Schwartz play and it had a giant arc that they wheeled out on the stage um, and then they wheeled it around and the other side was open and it became the set for uh, most of the second act. And that was a community production. It was um, a giant cast of all ages from kids on up, um, which was just fantastic and the costumes were fantastic. So it was really quite the spectacle. Um, it was really good. Uh, oh, and then I guess we did three things this weekend. We saw a Grease sing-along, which I'd never actually seen in Grease before. And the week before that, we saw Hedwig. Before that, we saw The Mikado, uh, which our friend Suzanne was in, um, which I'd never seen a Gilbert and Sullivan before. And I'm not sure I'm really into that stuff that's that close to being opera. Um, and so, you know, the music didn't necessarily do it for me, but it was very cool to have seen that, um, and it was a very fun production. Before that, uh, we saw Ragtime and Thoroughly Modern Millie, which uh, Jenny mentioned in her blog uh, for many weeks ago. Uh, we saw Avenue Q, um, which I hadn't seen before, and that was fantastic. I did go out uh, quite a bit, um, uh, went out to D-Bar for their Friday night uh, Pop Rocks, uh, which we've done uh, quite a bit since Jenny's been back as well. Uh, and a bunch of show tune Tuesdays, um, but I guess that's kind of the usual. Tracy, uh, I want to say that your um, Quidditch sign, th that was totally awesome. Uh, that was fantastic. Um, Ginger, um, at your murder mystery, that's just really cool to, to be able to write something like that. I've kind of wanted to do actually something for a con, um, and maybe <laughs> you have some advice. Um, I've kind of wanted to do a whole like so I go to Esperanto conventions, but it's kind of like a Harry Potter convention where you've got sort of an opening ceremonies and then, you know, you just have lots of programming throughout the week or th for the weekend. And I thought it would be really cool to do uh, a murder mystery that was sort of had clues and things throughout the whole weekend. So it wasn't necessarily one of these party things where you're all together and you've got a couple hours or whatever, but where anybody could participate or not participate. And, you know, I kind of got this idea that it's sort of the, you know, opening keynote presentation, uh, you know, somebody might stumble in, shoot uh, the, you know, the president of the association or whatever, um, and, you know, then run out and then there would be the mystery of what happened and you'd have clues like in the program booklet would have, maybe there'd be some fake ad that had some clues or there might be a couple of program items that you could go to and there would be clues in them. Uh, but, I, you know, I haven't figured out how to make that work. Uh, Harrison... I wanted to thank you for the Buffy episode suggestion, uh, the one where um, Andrew narrates. Um, I can't quite remember that episode, but uh, that's totally, you're right, very perceptive that that's the kind of thing that, you know, I like, uh, which reminds me that the, there was another episode where Jonathan was a uh, man of mystery or whatever, and which was another sort of play on convention um, that uh, might also work, but the Andrew one is probably more my style, um, but I, I don't remember it, so I'd have to rewatch. But also, I kind of think neither of those were probably very deep, and I would really like to, you know, the, to have a favorite that is, um, you know, that I appreciate at a deeper level um, that's maybe more serious. But, uh, but thank you that, for that suggestion. Yeah, so for the theme of death, which I have to catch up on, um, I'm not really sure what to do for that. Maybe my absence for a long time counts as my qualifying for that theme, because maybe you thought I was dead. Um, but uh, for the one on how to do something, I was trying to come up with something good to do, and I'm sure there's something clever to do, but uh, Jenny was like, uh, you know, why don't you do a handstand? I think that's how it came up anyway, and I said, I totally took that on. I was like, I could do a handstand, 
And she was like, you sure? So this is kind of a challenge. So I'm going to show you how to do a headstand. Actually, I'm going to do a three-point stand because that's something we did, you know, when I was like five years old. And I remember being able to do that and being proud that I could do that. And that was really fun. Um, so I'm going to give that a try. Um, so see you in a second. So basically the trick here is that you're going to put your hands down like this with your elbows bent and you're going to put your feet on this ledge here um, as a first step towards doing the full handstand. Um, and it's going to be three points because your hands are two points and your head is the other point. And you do this and then from here you're going to go up. Uh, <coughs> Kind of like that, so let's give this another try. Yeah, basically like that. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> 